We're coming to the end of winter and slowly starting to emerge into spring as we, we start to see things like the wild forest flowers starting to emerge from the ground. And we're also starting to hear the birds calling a lot clearer, especially in the early morning and in the later in the afternoon. And that's as they start to pair up to start getting ready for breeding. There's no better time of the year really to photograph the subject of this video, the first family, than at the end of winter and the beginning of spring. Here in the UK we have a total of uh, six members of the thrush family. We have the song thrush and the minnesol thrush, the blackbird and the ring ousel and the field fair and the red wing. Now the field fair and the red wing are winter visitors. I did a separate video on how to photograph red wings and field fairs and I'll leave a link to that at the end of this video. So in this video what we're going to do is we're going to look at the song thrush, the missile thrush, the blackbird and the ring user. What we'll do is we'll look at how to identify them, we'll look at their habitat, where you're going to find them, we'll look at some of the behaviour, my approach to photographing them and what I'll do is I'll share some top tips with you along the way. All four of the thrushes that we're going to look at can be seen in the UK, whereas some are, are quite widespread while others are more localised and aren't seen throughout the UK and I'll explain that to you as I go through the video. So where are we going to find thrushes and their habitat? Well, thrushes can be found in a number of varying habitats ranging from things like parks and gardens, woodland, farmland, open countryside and upland moorlands. Our, our gardens during the winter become very important to thrushes, especially um, when we have severe winter weather, um, when the food stocks are depleted in the countryside and it forces them into our gardens. What we'll do now is we'll look at how to identify each of the thrush family. Thrushes are mostly associated with having speckled patterns to their, their plumage, but that's not the case for all members of the thrush family, as we will find out. The first pair of thrushes we're going to look at are the song thrush and the missile thrush. These two birds can often be confused due to their similarities and the habitats that they share. A song thrush is slightly smaller than a blackbird, it's mainly brown all over, uh, it's got a lighter, paler colour on their breasts. The spots on the breast are, are shaped like upside down hearts or arrowheads. And the spots become more rounded and slightly elongated on the belly and the flanks of the bird. There is no white outer tail feather like there is on the missile thrush. Both the male and the female song thrush are almost identical in appearance and they can really only be distinguished by listening to the call. The male song thrush has a very vocal call and they produce a very repetitive sound. Normally in a three note burst, it can be more, but normally in a repetitive three note burst. And the call itself can be very musical and they often sing it from a high perch. And here it is. The missile thrush is the largest of our thrushes here in the UK and it's a quite a stocky looking bird. It's paler than the song thrush overall. The spots on the upper breast are more like thorns uh, whereas the, the spots on the lower part of the bird are a lot more rounded. And the missile thrush also has white edges to the wing and under the tail is also white whereas the song thrush is not. Again, both the male and the female missile thrush are very similar in appearance and again it often comes down to being able to, to tell the difference purely through the the call of the bird. Um, the missile thrush call is a very flute-like melodic type sound kind of similar or quite close to the blackbird in, in, in sound um, but they can also make um, a rattle-like sound sounds, sounds like a, a football rattle when the missile thrush is alarmed and I'll now show you or you'll be able to hear the two separate calls. Firstly it's the call of the missile thrush followed by the alarm and here they are. As I said earlier, both the missile thrush and the song thrush are, are, are quite similar. So 
what are the main differences between the two birds? Well, the song thrush is smaller and more compact, whereas the missile thrush is larger and more upright. The song thrush has a, a brown buff back and breast, whereas the missile thrush, and this is a good point, well, it's more paler uh, with regards to the brown colours on the back and on the cheeks of the bird itself. The song thrush, the spots on the song thrush in the upper chest are arrowhead spots, whereas on the missile thrush they look like thorn heads. The song thrush doesn't have any white on the tail, whereas the missile thrush has white on the tail. Another difference between the, the song thrush and the missile thrush is if you see them in flight. Again, the missile thrush is a larger bird than the, the, the song thrush, but the song thrush has an orange buff underwing to it, whereas the missile thrush has a, a white underwing. The song thrush doesn't have any white on the tail, whereas the missile thrush has white on the tail edge. And here's a short video clip of a song thrush having a bath, and you should be able to see the orange buff under its wing. So when it comes to thrushes diet, what do they eat? Well, they have a very varied diet um, that changes with the seasons, but thrushes in general will mainly eat things like earthworms, insects, will eat seeds, some will eat snails, berries, and fallen fruit, berries and fallen fruit, especially more so during the winter months. Okay, top tip on the song thrush. Um, song thrushes are known for breaking open snail shells by bashing them against hard stones. And if you can find one of those sites that they're known as a thrush's anvil, it's a great opportunity to, to, to get a unique picture of the song thrush, which it's famed for, if you can find them. Top tip for photographing missile thrushes is that Especially during very cold weather, it will often see thrushes moving out of the countryside and into their gardens, and that's probably the, the, the best time that you'll see a, a missile thrush in the winter. Uh, one of the best foods to attract missile thrushes is, and all thrushes, but missile thrushes especially, is apples. Either if you're fortunate enough to have an orchard and you've got apple trees, fallen apples. If not, like me in my garden, I've taken some apples, I've chopped them up and I've put them on branches on my trees in my gardens and I've managed to get some pictures. Okay, I just want to take a, a time out to let you know of a project I'm working on at the moment. It's called Bird Photography and Spring Visitors and it's a follow-up to my previous video which was on bird photography and winter visitors. Later this year, I'm also going to follow these two up with two further videos, one on summer visitors and one on autumn visitors. Now back to the video. Now we're going to look at both the blackbird and the ring ouzel. The blackbird is one of our most common birds here in the UK, whereas the ring ouzel uh, is a visitor that arrives towards the end of March each year to breed mainly on our upland rocky moorlands, and they're also known as the mountain blackbird. The blackbird, as I said, is what, one of the most common birds here in the UK. Um, the blackbird is slightly larger than the ring ouzel. Uh, when we look at the male blackbird, it's black all over. Uh, it has a bright yellow bill and it has a, a yellow rim around its eye which is quite distinctive. When you look at the female blackbird, they're more a speckled brown colour all over, they have a dull yellow bill and they lack the bright yellow rim around the eye. When it comes to the blackbird's call, call um, it's probably, as it is the, the most common bird, but it's the one bird that I would advise you if you're uh, a bird photographer that you really learn because it is really really helpful. The song is very melodic and tuneful and it's a real sign of things like real sign on a spring morning or the dawn chorus. The real thing to learn about the blackbird call is its alarm. It's a great indicator that there is something out there um, that they're not happy with. That's either your presence or, in a lot of cases, it's the presence of a predator, something like a, a sparrowhawk. Like this sparrowhawk, which 
just like the blackbird, the blackbird will feed on worms, sparrowhawk feeds on birds and this is a picture that I took in my garden of a sparrowhawk um, with a blackbird which it took for its lunch. The blackbird tip, the top tip that I give you about the blackbird as I've just said and, and I like to reiterate it again is that you need to learn the alarm call of the blackbird because it's a great indicator out in the out in the wild that there is a predator around or and it's a warning to other birds as well and the big predator for the blackbird and other songbirds is the sparrowhawk moving on to the final thrush in the, the series that we're looking at today we're going to look at the ring ousel and the ring ousel is the rarest of the thrushes it's smaller than a blackbird but it does have a longer tail ring ousels live mainly on upland heathlands and moorland uh, foraging and nesting in rocky outcrops and crevices. When we look at the male, the male has dark brown upper parts, the markings on the wing are pale and the main identification feature is that it has a white crescent across its chest or its bib and it also has a yellow bill. When we look at the, the female ring ouzel, um, the colourings and the markings on the female are a lot paler than that of the male, a lot less striking. The female has a dusky, again, dusky brown upper parts, uh, but it does have sort of like silvery grey scale markings uh, on its body. Uh, doesn't have a bright, web bed, bright white bib, but it does have a grey coloured crescent bib across its chest. If you go up onto the moorlands, um, looking for ring ousels, it's really important that you learn the call um, so that it can lead you to where, where they are. The ring ousel call is a, a lot less musical than that of the blackbird. It's a series of repeated notes and it's linked to high pitched sounds and here it is now. One area of confusion that can sometimes arise uh, is when you see a leucistic blackbird, especially like this one that I photographed. From a distance you would think this was a, a, a ring ousel. Um, these birds have white patches on their bodies, um, which means that if the white patch is in the right place like it is in this photograph, it could be mistaken for a ring ousel at distance. Okay, when we compare the blackbird and the ring ousel, what are the, the differences? Well, the main differences are uh, that the blackbird has a bright yellow ring around its eye, whereas the ring ousel has a dark ring around its eye. The blackbird has an all black coloured body, whereas the ring ousel has a brown body. Main identify feature difference is that the ring ousel has a white crescent patch across its chest or bib. In general, blackbirds are larger than ring ousels, however, the ring ousel does have a longer tail than the blackbird. Top tip for the ring ousel is to actually get out into their habitat, up into the moorlands and the heathlands, look for rocky outcrops, um, listen out for the ring ousel's call and that should lead you to them and give you the opportunity to get your pictures of the ring ousel or its other name, the mountain blackbird. And it's not called the mountain blackbird for no reason. When it comes to camera settings for photographing thrushes, I would recommend the following. Thrushes spend a lot of time high up, apart from the, the ring ousel, high up in trees and they're on branches getting blown about in the wind singing their songs. So you need to be careful with your shutter speed. So my go-to setting would be f7.1, shutter speed of 1, 1,000th of a second and I always shoot in auto ISO. Think about considering lowering your shutter speed if you're supported on a tripod, monopod or on a beanbag and I would look at a minimum shutter speed of around about 1 250th of a second when the camera is supported. Again, aperture about f7.1 and as I said, I always shoot in auto ISO. What I want to do now is just leave you with some of my favourite images of the Thrush family. And also, I think it would be great for yourself as an individual to set yourself a challenge to try and photograph all the members of the thrush family. And especially during the winter, the Red Wings and the field fairs who come into the country in the, literally the millions.
So all I would say is that if you've liked this video, could you hit the like button? Could I also ask you to subscribe to my channel, Kevin Hartley Photography? It's completely free. It doesn't cost you anything. And what that does is it just keeps giving me that incentive to, to keep growing my channel and share my knowledge and experience of photographing wildlife and nature here in the UK. So until the next time, stay safe, take care, and I hope to see you soon. Bye for now. Thank you.